For baseball fans, October is World Series time. It's also the month with the spookiest observance of the year. Caravaninger ventured to a Metro East mansion allegedly populated by people who used to live there in the flesh. It's said to be one of the most haunted places in the Midwest. Visitors tell of ghostly whispers in the wine cellar and silent figures that are darker than the dark. These are just some of the stories to come out of the McPike Mansion as it sits in watchful silence over Albee Street in Alton, Illinois. The house was built by Henry Guest McPike, a charismatic man who seemed to have his hand in everything, from winemaking to real estate to politics. He was a friend of Abraham Lincoln and eventually became mayor of Alton for two terms, where he built his stately mansion with its sprawling orchards and vineyards in 1869. In 1994, after standing empty for decades, Sharon Ludke saw that the house was up for auction and put a bid on it, hoping to save one of Alton's grandest buildings. Parts of the mansion and grounds are now opened back up for paranormal tours, where guests can get filled in on the history and mystery of the place. Family-friendly campouts and the paranormal tours help to fund a slow but steady renovation with the majority of the work being done by Sharon's husband, George, and a small army of volunteers. Each person has really wanted to contribute, which has been you know, kind of a thrill for us. I think that there's just a, a real appreciation for how things were built in the past, uh, the size of, of buildings you know, in that era. They grind these slotted blades, these are for crown molding. And they would bolt Eric Lavelle, a craftsman with a collection of Victorian machinery, was the perfect match for the mansion. This is the most exciting project that I've done. It's the biggest, it's, um, I can't say it's the oldest because I've worked on older buildings, but never uh, one quite this big. And uh, the millwork here is pretty extraordinary. I get to do a little bit of everything and uh, I get to utilize pretty much all of my equipment, which Sometimes you'll have a machine that's really specialized that just sits in a corner and gathers dust, like a window-making machine. And boy, could McPike use some windows. My daughter read about it in the Weird Illinois book, and we decided to go to several different places in the Weird Illinois book, and we came up here, and when I looked around, I thought, you know, maybe my skills would mesh with things that they needed, so we began to, to talk about that, and my daughter liked to come up here and and work with me, so it's, it's really been pretty nice. As the restoration proceeds, it seems to have drawn the curiosity of those other than the average weird Illinois reader. I have a feeling sometimes when I'm working in the yard, it's, someone's watching me. It isn't a, isn't a scary type of thing, it's more of a supervisory type of role. Although Sharon's main focus is the preservation of the house, she quickly realized that the mansion came with much more than history and a lot of work. My kind of theory is if you hear it three times by three different people and they didn't know the other person said it, that I also think there's some validity there. And sometimes things that you think are trivial turn out to be important, like Henry's uh, last daughter, Morlin, uh, used to be in, in whistling contests. And uh, so when someone says to you, oh, did you hear whistling in there? Well, then, it, you know, you put two and two together. As the sun begins to set, Jerome Minx, the mansion's tech support, shows us around the grounds, ending up at the remains of an unknown child's crypt. In addition to providing light for the tours, Jerome sets up equipment to capture any audio or visual proof of the spirits that are said to populate the mansion. He's been working with the mansion tours for over a decade and keeps a record of any ghostly encounters that guests, or for that matter, he, might have had. I'm in the doorway. At one point, my entire back from my neck to my waist gets ice cold and I feel somebody giving me a diagonal hug like they're looking over my shoulder. Did that scare you? No. It felt like, you know, a curious, loving hug. Though most of the house is still structurally unsafe for guests to walk through, the cellars, where the McPikes bottled their wine, are now accessible. And they are said to be the most haunted place on the property. We do a dark room session for 
um, 30 to 40 minutes and invite the spirits to come down in the cellar and make themselves known in sight or sound or touch or smell, as long as it is not harmful to anyone. Yeah, you heard right, a dark room session. This means all of the lights are turned out in the creepy cellar underneath the haunted mansion. Sandy Little Lizard is very sensitive to what she calls the in-between and has been working with Sharon on the tours for years. Come on in. This is the place. The most interesting phenomena I find is that when we turn the lights off, you can't see your hand in front of your face. It's that dark. But when Henry McPike, when he enters, he shows up as a shadow that is darker than the dark. So you can see his shadow walk through the cellar. And that's a common occurrence. We have children's spirits that will sit on your lap. And so many people have had been perfectly warm, but the tops of their legs are like ice because they have a child on their lap. Despite the decidedly spooky elements, Sharon hopes that the mansion will be a place where happy memories are made. Our intention for the house is to keep it open to the public, you know, eventually open it up again for tours inside the house, perhaps a B&B &B on the second floor, special events on the first floor. Truly, the nicest thing about owning McPike Mansion is meeting all the nice people. I have met people from all over the world, all over the United States. I mean, it's, it's really very fascinating. Thanks to its ghostly allure and the years of hard work the owners and volunteers have put into it, McPike Mansion has been granted an afterlife.